So as I said to Lucille this morning, I have a hard time standing still when I'm presenting, but I'm going to try my best. And then I'll walk and talk. We'll give this one a try. So I wanted to start by saying that um, I've been at Ontario Northland uh, for about 13 years now, uh, in this position for about three years. And we have almost 800 employees and thousands of pensioners, passionate people about transportation services. And I thought the most passionate people about transportation services until I met Lucille. And then I realized that we had some work to do because she is the most passionate woman that I've ever met in terms of passenger as well as Linda. And um, I, you know, I think we all should be thankful that there are people that are this relentless about something that's really important in Northern Ontario in terms of transportation. So I'm going to take... I'm going to take the next 30 or so minutes to share uh, the Ontario Northland story with everyone and to provide some insight into our history and more importantly what we've gone through over the last few years and, and where we, we hope to continue this journey over the next hundred years of our history and, and present and future. So I, I love to start the presentation with this type of a picture because it sort of epitomizes what we're about. This is an economic engine for Nor Northern Ontario and, and Ontario Northland is about rail transportation and we're about bus transportation. And the last number of years has been about ensuring that this map goes to 2118. And we're very proud to say that this summer, and Andy Mitchell's here, he's the president of our local Unifor union, and we just hired fifth generation Ontario Northland employees last summer. And the intent will be to hire 10th generation employees because the impact of passenger and bus uh, transportation and rail freight in Northern Ontario is extremely important, as are the jobs that this type of transportation company enables. So um, we like to go to uh, Toronto as well and share these types of maps because I agree with Lucille that the, the magnitude of Northern Ontario is, uh, should not be underestimated and certainly what we've done and what we do at Ontario Northland to, to give everybody a sense is we have about almost 700 miles of track uh, running from North Bay all the way up to Moose Knee over to Calstock and into Quebec and Rouen Naranda and um, we do lots of freight. In fact, our history is rail freight, and, and that's where the economic enabler, and we work very closely with a lot of the economic development officers in the communities in Northern Ontario to attract industry to the north. And one of the key components of our transformation plan over the last several years has been to diversify that business so that we can support um, industry on the rail line, but we can also support attracting industry and supporting people off the rail line. So on this map, you'll see some red dots. Those are the transloads that we have, and we'll, we're going to be implementing more of those. And essentially what that means is that you can be a farmer or someone who um, is shipping propane or lumber or grain, and you can ship it from truck from the, the farm uh, all the way to a place like Earlton and get that onto our rail freight solution and then be connected to the North American Rail Network and cost effectively ship um, whatever type of um, uh, industry that you're in. So that's where we're at now. We have Earlton in agriculture, Inglehart, we're shipping lumber and propane, uh, Timmins, we uh, support De Beers and, and other industry, Cochrane, we have grinding media for <coughs> mining. We actually just introduced a fuel transload and we'll be doing some work there to help get a lot of the fuel um, off the roads and onto rail. And again, we have another transload up in Moosonee that supports, as you can imagine, the impact of things like uh, household materials, uh, lumber, those types of things to enable cost-effective shipping of not just food but building materials up to the far north is extremely important and we're going to continue to build that relationship with the people of the First Nations communities of the James Bay Coast. Um, you know, the other part that we're really passionate about, and I know Lucille is and others that are involved in this day, is the economic, not just the economic impact, but the environmental impact of rail should not be underestimated. It obviously, um, there's a lot of um, provincial and federal mandates that are related to reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and certainly rail and bus play a very big role in ensuring that we meet those goals. 
So we're gonna to continue to work with these communities. We're proud of the support that we get from obviously the mayors and, and political leaders that are here and the work that we do to enable a very prosperous Northern Ontario. If you look back in our future, when the rail line was put in and started in 1902 in North Bay and made its way north, communities were started and prospered because of the impact of Ontario Northland. And that's why it's so important that we we renewed and transformed the organization, not to forget the rich history that we have and the impact that we've had in the North, but to ensure that we realign ourselves and we renew the good things of the past, but we also don't lose sight of what our passengers and our customers need from us because times have changed. There's technology, there's things that we can do to support our, our um, industry partners and we're gonna continue to do that through our transformation efforts. On the people side, um, this is our map showing northeastern Ontario and a couple of very proud moments of the last couple of years at Ontario Northland was the, it's a, was historic for us to expand our bus network. A couple of years ago we expanded to Ottawa and just recently we expanded to Sault Ste. Marie and last week to Manitoulin Island. And you know I think it goes without being... Yeah. Yeah, a lot of um, extremely positive support for all the right reasons. When we look at Southern Ontario, there's an issue of congestion. When we look at Northern Ontario, there's an issue of connectivity and support for really important services like this because it's not that necessarily people want to travel by car. You may have a car, but I know there's a lot of people that in the inclement weather and the geography that we have in Northern Ontario, offering these types of alternative methods of transportation are extremely important, especially when we talk talk about um, seniors going to medical appointments and students going to ed educational institutions. And on this map you'll see the purple circles and some that have crosses in the middle of them. The, the pluses or the crosses um, are representative of hospitals that we now support on our bus line. So it's not just about connecting communities, it's about ensuring that people are able to get to their uh, medical appointments across the north. We've, we, you'll see those in Sault Ste. Marie and Sudbury and, and probably in the next three months we'll be also stopping in Timmins and North Bay and we're working with the LIN, the Local Area, uh, area Integration Network, Health Integration Network to ensure that transfers between northern hospitals happen efficiently and effectively, especially for seniors that have mobility issues, it's important to offer these types of services and our buses um, have um, many different types of buses that support accessibility needs and we're proud that that type of transportation service is available and, and we're seeing a lot of positivity with that. Also that we have, um, it's not just about getting northerners to connected to major centers like Toronto or Ottawa, it's about the ability to offer services in northern Ontario that attract southerners here as well and allows our um, educational institutions, universities and colleges to attract people to the north and hopefully get those young people to stay in the north. Um, I know in, in my, my own personal experience, I did go south to university, but uh, it wasn't until I moved north that I realized all of the unbelievable opportunity in terms of skilled work in Northern Ontario that we have to continue to talk about and make sure that we offer the services that are necessary to keep and attract people in the north. So just to give you a few stats, we also, we, we have our passenger rail services from Cochrane to Moosonee that carries almost 60,000 people uh, a year. And so we like to call it the five hour commuter ride and that's exactly what it is. It's a commuter train that enables the, the only land link for the people of the James Bay coastal communities and goes into to Moosonee and supports Moose Factory and all, and all the rest of the communities there. Um, we have about 535 scheduled trips, but we also support unique things like the Great Moon Gathering and the Little NHL and many um, social activities that are important to the communities that are happening outside of Moose Knee or Moose Factory or the other communities. The other unique thing that we offer on the Polar Bear Express is we have a uh, and I'll show you a picture of it in a couple of slides, but a car carrier, an auto carrier. So not many places do you see a rail passenger solution that allows you to bring your car with you. And so we're proud um, uh, to pro be able to provide that solution as well. On our bus network, show of hands of how many people know that we offer Bus Parcel Express. 
So it, I always say when we go to these presentations that it's the, one of the best kept secrets in Northern Ontario that we have a bus parcel express service and I would uh, hope that everybody leaves here and tries the service because it's, it's economical and it's same day service quite often because it travels on our bus and we support unique things in Northern Ontario that, that are parcels on the bus service. We have about 170,000 of those a year. Another thing to hit home uh, Lucille's map is that our bus drivers travel about 4 million kilometers a year on bus services. This is not like connecting something in southern Ontario. There are vast geography, inclement weather. Uh, this year has been the longest winter ever. I'm not even, actually it does look like it's over today and it looks like we're on the upswing, although I hate to say that. So, I mean, it's extremely important and we're proud of the buses that we have. They're, they're clean, the drivers are extremely wonderful and, and friendly. We have Wi-Fi on all of our buses. Um, it's a new way of thinking about bus and I think we all have to take an opportunity to try the service. I know when I go on it, I call it my little home office because it's not what p most people think about bus travel and I'm hopeful that um, certainly a lot of the people in Sault Ste. Marie who haven't had the opportunity to take our service will try it after today. Um, in terms of this map, I just want to point out a couple of things. Um, this, so our bus network is the white line here, and we've expanded, as I said, all the way to Sault Ste. Marie and down into Manitoulin Island. This phase from Hearst to Sault Ste. Marie is phase three of our rollout and will be uh, completed as of June of this year, and then we'll have the full network across northeastern on Ontario. And one of the key things to, to point out, uh, is that this is all about multimode transportation. Bus and rail are very complementary services. We ensure that our schedules line up when the Polar Bear Express gets in, that there's bus travel awaiting them so that those people can go and do shopping in Timmins or in, in Sudbury or in any of the major centres or even do a trip down to Toronto. But that's, that's where I think there's a lot of benefit that we can do is ensuring that schedules match up. So when there's community municipal transit solutions, we work together with the communities to ensure all of the schedules line up so that it's all about connecting the passenger and what's best in terms of customer service for them. So I just wanted to dive in a little bit. Obviously, this is the Rail Passenger Summit, and we don't often get a chance to really highlight a lot of the unique attributes of our Polar Bear Express um, service that offers between Moosonee and Cochrane. And a little history, so we started in 1902, but when passenger service was offered, the last spike went in in 1932 um, in Moosonee. And only about 12 years later did we start introducing food services on that um, service. In 1964, we started the excursion train where we started to highlight tourism and the impact that tourism could have in the north, in Cochrane and in Moosonee in those areas. The height of the tourism, you'll see this is um, two different pictures, obviously spread about 50 years apart. And the second one is our, our dome car. And in the height of tourism, we were, if you th consider that we have about 60,000 passengers right now a year, in the height of tourism, we had about 30,000 passengers coming in. And our hope is to work with the communities and, and certainly work together to enhance tourism as well and get those numbers back up again, because that's the prosperity of the North um, for us. The commuter train and the, the people who take that train come first. It's their train. But we want to work with those communities as well to help them enable tourism and to bring people in to get the communities and get that economic prosperity from passengers as well. Uh, in 2012, we really started focusing on the commuter travel. And in 2014 was when we started the transformation of Ontario Northland. So today, as we said, 186 miles, so about 300 kilometers between Cochrane and Moosonee, five-hour train ride, um, weekday service, and um, I think I, m I mentioned our, our um, bus parcel express. We also have express freight on our passenger service as well. Obviously, people do a lot of uh, shopping and, and traveling and bringing things back, so we have a lot of shipments on the Polar Bear Express as well. <coughs> Um, and we do two additional freight trains a, a week that are focused on lumber supplies, supporting of De Beers and other mines, things that um, are larger shipments. We do um, uh, Moosonee Transportation also is a partner of ours that ships a lot of things. We do uh, fuel shipments. So a lot of things that enable the industry up in, in Moosonee as well. 
We also probably are one of the only ones to still have, and there are some other ones, but we have flag stops, and we're really proud of these. Everybody know what a flag stop is? Yeah. Excellent. I should have door prizes or something to give out. So it, it's really interesting when you get a tourist that comes up on the Polar Bear Express and they and we stop in the middle of nowhere and there's a person on the side of the rail that's going like this, flagging down and may have a canoe, a four-wheeler, a moose. Uh, whatever it is that they have, we, we bring in and we're, we're proud to be able to connect those people so that hunting and fishing can go on. Um, there's a lot of people that go up um, the river as well and do canoe trips. So we'll support anybody along the rail line. This is um, basically showing our, our <coughs> the fact that we'll, we'll ship anything. And one of the first times I was on there actually, we stopped and picked up a humongous moose. And that was when we started instituting that you have to put it in something. Because when we went back to the baggage cart, there was the moose, blood and everything. Uh, so we're, we're proud to say now that we have some containers and some things to put anything that you happen to hunt or fish in. But that, you know what, that's what Northern Ontario is all about. And it's, you know, we can't get away from the things that are true to Northerners and ensure that we support those types of things with our transportation services. So the transformation has, has meant a, a number of things. It's meant um, investment from the province. So last year was our first ever 10-year capital plan, uh, about $504 million worth of um, infrastructure, buildings, um, upgrades to the rail line across our, our network, not just on the Polar Bear Express. But specifically for the Polar Bear, um, we worked with the communities to redesign the train with them. And um, we now have four passenger cars completed and we're also going to be redoing the dining cars, the baggage cars, and renewing the locomotives. So um, that was a long time coming and we're really proud to have that new train, uh, passenger train on there. In terms of infrastructure renewal, we actually have doubled the amount of track that we're upgrading on that line. Um, it is the only land link. It's extremely vital to the, those communities and we're taking great pride in making sure the next 10 years and going forward is supported and we put the right resources on this to make sure that it's a very comfortable and efficient train ride. This is a picture of our otter carrier. For those that don't know, you can put your um, truck or car on it, like I said, and we upgraded the, the mechanism for which you do that because the, the cars have evolved in our older solution was no longer working properly. In terms of customer service, this was another key element of our transformation. And again, you stay true to the rich history that we have in providing transportation. But one of the things that I think we potentially lost sight of was meeting with our passengers and meeting with our customers and asking them what we could do better to enable not just seamless transportation, but how do you want to communicate with us? So one of the first things we did a couple of years ago was we implemented online ticketing. So now that you can book your train travel or your bus travel online, and obviously, as you know, um, there's a few generations now that do everything online, and if you can't buy it online, they're not going. So that was one of the, the first things that we did. And of course, on the polar bear, it's really important that when families come together to go on that train, you can book your seats in advance and sit together on the train. The other thing that we've done on our bus service, which is just recent, is called Track My Bus. And we're proud to say that we have implemented this solution before any other bus carrier that I know of in North America, to the extent that we have, that when you um, are going on the bus or you're waiting for someone, you can go on your mobile device and put the origin and destination, and you can actually see exactly where the bus is. So it's important for customer service, but also really important, we have flag stops on the bus as well. If you're waiting out on 40 below weather, you want to know exactly when to get out of your car and get waiting for that bus because it's so cold out, you can see it on there. Or if you're like me and my daughter goes on the bus, I want to see exactly where she is, so I track her. I'd like that actually in her backpack, but I don't know if I'm allowed to do that just yet, but I would like that. Um, so use that. It's a, really, it's a really neat technology right now that, we're, that we've implemented on the, on the bus network. Um, some of the other technology things, We've, we've really, you know, people uh, work differently now. And, and most of our customers, whether it's to be paying online or whether it's just to um, get to track where um, certain things are happening on, uh, I'll give you an example, on our rail infrastructure. We implemented technology so that when our people were out in the field and they were doing track maintenance, they would 
in, they would um, enter this information on an iPad that would quickly get that information back to our central database so that people who are making decisions on what track to maintain or upgrade next would have that information instantly. All these little things, and there's been hundreds of them, have made it so that we've been more efficient in the way we deliver our, our services and have made us a stronger organization over the last number of years. And there's many hundreds of things more that we can do. And, and I will say this, that the majority of the suggestions that have been implemented have come from the people that are doing the work every day, the track maintainers, the people on the shop floor that are fixing um, our assets, whether it be a passenger car or a locomotive. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of smaller, medium suggestions have been implemented that have made us stronger. In terms of First Nations support, um, one of our major focus areas has been to go into the communities and talk to people and listen and respect what they're saying and understand how we can do a better job of serving them and supporting them. And one of the first things that we did is instituted some cultural awareness training. When you have a commuter train that has um, that many passengers, <laughs> when it has that many passengers that are First Nations and have some very, very specific and important things for us to understand about their culture and their background, we have to take the time necessary to understand that. And so we're proud to have done that. We, we've um, supported and um, been involved with um, drummers and I was, that drumming that happened at the beginning of this, I was saying to Rob, if only we could start all of our days like that to put a smile on our face, it was absolutely wonderful. And so we're reaching out more and understanding how to communicate better. We have in our heads how people want to be communicated to, but until you go and talk and listen and understand, um, you're going to learn a lot, and we have, and we've tried to implement those changes into the way we do business every day. We've also done little things like on the Polar Bear Express, we have a menu and it's in English and Cree. Now, Lord knows why we didn't do that sooner, right? Just little things like that where you go, it's not that we didn't want to, it's that we didn't think about it. And so we have to just take a moment and realize what are the other things that we're missing and start to do all of those as well. <clears throat> so just in summary about the Polar Bear Express and certainly uh, all transportation services that we have at Ontario Northland, the impact is really, really important. And it spans from being the link the land link to connect. It, it goes to decreasing costs. The Polar Bear Express enables lower food costs, enables people to bring up um, building materials to do all the things that they need to do as a community to ensure that the infrastructure is there to support them and to support tourism. It certainly has a huge impact on jobs in the north. So if we look at the Polar Bear Express as an example, we have customer service jobs in onboard services um, in express freight. We have um, a hotel that I didn't mention. We have the Cochrane Station Inn that supports and is in Cochrane and supports the Polar Bear Express and we have people obviously who work at that hotel that are part of our organization. Skilled trades. In Cochrane we have a maintenance facility that has um, electricians and rail car mechanics and machinists and those skilled trades ensure that the train comes in every day and leaves every morning and is clean and mechanically fit for service. And the on-time performance we have is about 98%. Uh, so it's because of those people and retaining that type of skilled trade in the north that makes the north strong uh, and makes the communities strong. And so we have that in Cochrane and we also have a shop in North Bay that does not just um, daily maintenance on our locomotives, but also renews the passenger train. So when we saw those new Polar Bear Express uh, passenger trains, we enabled that to happen through the expertise that we have in our North Bay shops. So one of the other areas of diversification that we did through transformation was we recognized that over the last hundred years, we have people within the organization that have skilled ability to look after our assets, our locomotives, our freight cars, our passenger cars. We took that expertise and now we not only use it for ourselves to renew the passenger train, but also we use it to um, bring in revenue and create more jobs in North Bay by going out to other rail lines and getting them to bring their business to North Bay. So recently we've had the Rocky Mountaineer luxury passenger train in the shops in North Bay 
And um, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say that we have skilled trades in our shops that can install an elevator in a passenger train and probably are, you know, there's only a couple of people, probably less than 10 in the world that knows how to do that and we're doing it in North Bay with our shop craft. So, <laughs> so not only is that diversification bringing in and allowing us to partner with CN and CP, we have their locomotives in our shops, but it also allows those skilled trades to stay and retain and be attracted to Northern Ontario, which then again creates economic prosperity in the Northern communities that's really important to ensuring a strong Northern Ontario. Um, we also have the economic uh, impact of not only bringing that work into North Bay or into Cochrane or into these smaller communities, but that in turn supports small business suppliers that support our efforts. So we buy things um, to support those contracts. The people in Ontario Northland obviously are economic enablers themselves. So when you have 800 employees and 2,800 pensioners who create economic stability in these um, rural communities, it's very important organization, not just on the transportation side, but the down slide of economic enablement. Um, we also, we've talked about supporting the far north and also tourism and we've had a number of people talk about tourism and the impact. When you have these types of services, you enable better tourism and when you have tourism, you highlight the benefits of their community and it's just a domino effect after that. So we're proud of what these transportation services provide in the north. On the marketing and communication side, um, you know, I think one of the things that we were a little bit remiss of is we we sort of knew the impact that we had, but we didn't ever really talk about it as an organization. And so we've really gone to great lengths to, um, we had the first ever Northern Connections magazine, Rebecca McGlynn here, who is the brainchild behind that for our organization. And I think we have a copy of it over there if someone would like to see it. Um, we're gonna be coming out with another one. And what it does is um, highlights some of the employees that we have on Ontario Northland, but also highlights uh, some of the businesses that we've supported or that have come to Northern Ontario because of Ontario Northland. So a chance for us to highlight some of the great work internally and some of the great impact externally. Um, as many of you may know, we've also um, been showcased on Discovery Channel. Um, I don't know, have, has anybody seen the Rocky Mountain uh, Railroad? So Discovery Channel came and approached Rebecca a couple of years ago and um, it's not often that you would want to say no to the Discovery Channel who is offering to highlight the impact of passenger rail in, in rural communities. And they spent about three or four months with our marketing department and hundreds of our employees. And you'll see um, every Monday night on Discovery Channel an hour long um, show that has half CP, Canadian Pacific and half Ontario Northland in highlighting the very unbelievable impact that we have um, in Moosonee and along that passenger rail route. And it's amazing to me, I mean, I learn something new every time I watch it, and so do our employees. There's many of them who have reached out and said, oh, I, you know, I didn't know we did that, and I've been working here for 30 years, and my grandfather and dad worked here as well, and we didn't know that. So the ability for us to be able to showcase the great work of our employees and the impact that we have um, is a really wonderful opportunity, and in fact, I think it beat out Gold Rush in Europe a couple of weeks ago. So this is, it's unbelievable that a little organization with a, a passenger rail service is now having, I think they said that the, the viewership is about 60 million people internationally. So um, I think it's about 1 million in Canada, but um, uh, the, the global reach is absolutely unbelievable and so when we start to offer more tourism opportunities and we have the ability to showcase something like that, um, you, you just can't pray for things that are that opportunistic for us. Um, we also do the Christmas train and so really trying to do our part to give back to the communities and, and um, highlight the ability for us to work together as a community and, and bring, we bring Santa to Moosonee actually. So, who can say that? I, um, and moving on, I just wanted to, to take a moment and summarize that, first of all, thank you so much to Lucille and the organization uh, that promoted this, is for us to have the ability to highlight um, what we're passionate about at Ontario Northland and, and what we hope to do in the future in terms of transportation and connecting communities and connecting people. Over the last few years, we've 
renewed our passenger rail and will continue to. We've expanded our bus service for the first time ever and will continue to do that and continue to offer more technology and more things that enhance our customer service. And if you have any ideas, we're all ears. We offer a survey that gets popped up when we do Wi-Fi on the bus to try to get more information from passengers so we can take that in and enable the next year's plans of what we're going to implement. We've um, implemented innovative rail hubs that allow people that are off rail to connect to that North American network. And we're really unique, in fact, because we we are a railway that connects to CN in Hearst, we connect to CN in Rua Naranda, and we connect to CN and CP through Genesee, Wyoming, and OVR in North Bay. So the unique attribute of being able to be someone that can set up their business in Northern Ontario and have that many connectivity options that allow them to get to anywhere in North America very quickly and very efficiently is um, something that we want to make sure we highlight and do our part to work together with these communities to attract industry. As I said, we diversified our remanufacturing business, so we took the skills and ability that we have with our skilled trades, and we use that ability to grow more business and bring that into North Bay to then again grow jobs and, and continue to um, grow the business and ensure that we have a strong uh, financial balance sheet. Because as Lucille said, you're the owners of Ontario Northland. The taxpayers are the owners, and we need to do our part to make sure that we're responsible for your dollars. And part of what we're proud of over the last three years is ensuring that we're efficiently run. And it's not just a transformation journey that happens over three years. This is the ability, and the reason I put this next one up of continuous improvement culture means that it's, not, it's never ending. It's if you can instill that type of culture that people know that you have to continue to change to remain constant and effective to your customers, that's what transformation is. Transformation is always looking for the next thing that you can do to be better and to serve better, and that's what we intend to do. So we don't intend to take our foot off the pedal. We intend to continue down this journey and ensure that we are relevant to you and relevant to passengers and relevant to our customers ongoing. We are also proud of the renewed relationship and trusted relationship with the government and m and You know, part of transformation is always to renew uh, and ensure there's trust with all of the people that are your stakeholders, the taxpayers, the, the ministry, our relationships with our unions that are really open and transparent now. And I think that there's an understanding that if we work together and uh, share information and trust each other, we will grow the business. And that's exactly what we've done over the last couple of years. And, and I want to highlight the good work from uh, Unifors here, Andy, and, and your team. It's, it's really great when you have, we have an organization that has 85% of our organization that's uh, unionized. We have five unions. And we're proud of the relationship we, we have with them. And we're proud that um, we all understand that we live and work together in Northern Ontario. And um, if we work together, we're gonna have a strong organization for a very, very, very long time, and we're gonna be able to attract and retain really great jobs in Northern Ontario, and I think that's something to really be proud of. <laughs> so, just in ending, I, I obviously have highlighted that we, you know, we really believe in transportation in Northern Ontario, and the last few years have really instilled confidence in all of us that we are renewed um, and we're here to strengthen, grow, and improve Northern Ontario. And if anybody has any suggestions of what we can do better and how we can support you better, we are, we are all ears. But we're proud of the passenger services that we provide in both rail and bus. And we look forward to continuing to serve you for another 100 years. So thank you very much.